we'll begin designing our album by choosing the images to be included. In the Pictures column, click the plus sign to select the images we will use. Navigate to the file location and click Select. The selected files will be displayed along the left side of the screen. Go to the Page Styles tab, click the gear icon, and choose a Modern Layouts category. Select a template to use for our first spread. Drag and drop the template to the two page spread for side one and side two of the album. Select an image to drop into the template's image notes. Click on an image and then drag and drop it into this opening. The image will appear in the picture box of our layout. Select another image for side two of our two page layout. Again, Drag and drop the image on the opening of the template. Click the picture on page 2 of the layout. Notice the handles on the four corners and four sides of the image note. We will use the handles to modify the picture box. To enlarge, click on a handle and drag. Once the note is the desired size, release the mouse button and click outside to keep the change. To crop the image, place the mouse cursor on the photo and double click. The crop box window will be displayed. To change the crop, click here and drag the handle to apply a new crop to the image. When finished, click OK. Repeat the same steps to modify the other images as well. Next, let's modify all the image nodes on our two page layout at one time. The first node is already selected. Hold down the Shift key and click the other image nodes until all are selected. In the upper right corner of the program, click the first tab and let's modify the corners of our photos. Click and drag the slider to add rounded corners to the image nodes. In addition, we can also add borders around our images. Click the Borders checkbox. A small black border of one pixel now surrounds our photos. To change the width of the border, move the slider to a different setting. Change the border color by clicking on the black color swatch. A list of colors to select from will be displayed. For this example, we will click the orange color and the border is now the color selected. We can further modify the orange color. Click Other to modify the color. The Color Picker window is now displayed. Above the OK and Cancel buttons, click the Define Custom Colors button. Another half of the window will open. Click on the black triangle here and move the slider to lighten the orange color. Click the Add to Custom Colors button, or if a specific color is required, input the red, green, and blue values to custom mix the color. Click the Add to Custom Colors button, and our new color is added to the custom color swatches. Select a new color swatch and click OK. A drop shadow can be added to the image nodes. Click the Drop Shadow checkbox and a drop shadow will appear around each photo. To adjust the width of the drop shadow, use the offset slider or simply input the value desired. In addition, the angle, blur, color, and opacity of the drop shadow can be modified as well. For this demonstration, let's convert this image from a color photo to a black and white. Click the second tab in the top right and locate a section called Picture Enhancement. All the photos on the two page layout are selected. If we change the photos from original to black and white, all the images will be black and white. Click here to deselect all the photos. Now, select this image, go to the Mode pull down menu, and select black and white. From this same tab, the image can be flipped vertically or horizontally, depending on how that image is to appear in our layout. On the same tab, a vignette can be added to our image. Click the Vignette checkbox to enable this feature. We can change the vignette to an oval, add some blur, and lower the opacity. Use the sliders to soften the vignette to your preference. Click on Side 3 and Side 4. Select another template for our layout. Again, drag and drop the template onto our two-page spread. For this new layout, we can change the background from the default white. In the upper right corner, click the last tab for the Page Background options. In addition, the background color can be changed to an orange, a magenta, 
or any other color. For the left page, select the blue color for the background. As before, the selected background colors can be changed to different shades or levels of brightness. Click the left or right page color swatch. Select the other option and modify the background of our layout using the color picker as demonstrated before. In addition to solid colors, we can select backgrounds preloaded into the software. Click on the Backgrounds tab and scroll through the background options. Drag and drop a background onto the layout. Here we add the background to the left page. Drag the same or different background to the right page. Another option is for a background to span across our two page spread. Drag a background to the layout and center it here. A solid border will be placed around the outside of the spread. Drop the background on the layout and it will span across the two pages. Again, let's add some images to our layout and change the borders of the image notes. Change the crop of our photos by double clicking and reposition the crop box over the image. Click OK and the new crop is applied to our photo. Click on Side 5 and Side 6 from our pages above. For these two pages, begin by adding a photo as the background. Select an image, then drag and drop it onto the layout. The result is a very small image on the page. In this example, the image should span across both pages of our two page layout. To accomplish this, right click on the photo to display a pop up menu. From the menu, Select the Fit option, then Fit the Spread. The image now spans across the two pages. Again, to change the crop applied to the photo, double click on the image and the crop box will be displayed to crop the photo. To change the opacity of our background photo, click the first tab in the upper right corner and adjust the opacity slider. Let's add some image nodes to the layout and drop in some photos over our background. Go to the toolbar and click the picture box icon. An empty picture box or image node is added to the layout. Click the picture box, hold down our mouse button, and move it to where we want it on the layout. As before, use the handles to resize the image node larger or smaller, vertical or horizontal. Select another image, drag and drop it into the picture box. Repeat the above steps to add another picture box to our design. In addition, we can create an exact duplicate of this picture box and place it in a different location on our layout. To copy the picture box, right click and click copy. Then, right click again and choose paste. A duplicate copy of the picture box is now on our layout. Drag the picture box to a new location, then drag and drop a photo onto the new image node. The picture boxes can be modified with the frame around the photo. Click the Frames tab and scroll through the selection of frames. Drag and drop the selected frame to the image nodes to add the frame to the photos. And, as before, double click on each image node to change the crop of our photo in the layout. And repeat this step on each picture box. We can save this custom layout as a new template to reuse on another page or another album. Click the Page Styles tab, then locate the gear icon on the right side of the tab. Click the icon and select Save Spread as Page Style. Tile the new template with a descriptive name for future reference. From the pull down menu, choose a category to save the template into, or create a new category by selecting New and then typing in the name such as Favorites and click OK. For this example, we will save this template as Test 1 and click OK. We have now added this custom page template to our Page Styles tab. To use a new template, click on the gear icon, click Category, select Favorites, and the new template is in our Favorites category. Click on Page 7 and Page 8 from above. To reuse our new template, drag and drop it onto this two page spread. Drag and drop images onto the background and the image nodes of the template. Save our project, click the floppy disk icon in the toolbar. As with any other program, 
we recommend saving your work periodically. Again, add an image to the background of the pages by dragging and dropping this image onto our background. As before, we will right click, click on fit, and then fit the spread. The image now spans across our two page spread. Double click on the photo to change the crop. For this example, let's lower the opacity of the image. Click the first tab in the upper right hand corner. Use the opacity slider and move the opacity to a lower setting. Let's add some image nodes to our layout by clicking the picture box on the toolbar. Reposition the picture box to where we want it to be located. For this demonstration, we will add several picture boxes by clicking the picture box icon again, or add picture boxes by using the copy and paste process demonstrated earlier. To add an image of the exact same size to the layout, right click, choose copy, then right click again and choose paste. Again, position the image node where we want it on the layout and repeat the process. For this demonstration, let's butt these picture boxes up against each other. At this point, we want all image nodes selected. Click on the first picture box, hold down the shift key, and click on each picture box. We will align all the image nodes along the left side. Right click, choose Align Space, then select the Align Left option. The image nodes are now perfectly aligned along the leftmost image node. Right click again, select the Space option, scroll down to the Space items, and choose a vertical checkbox. For this example, we will space the picture boxes with one half inch between them. Input the spacing as 0.5 inches between the items. From the pull down menu, we can add space between the top edge, the bottom edges, or centers of our picture boxes. Again, choose the between the items option and click OK. There will be exactly one half inch between each picture box. Next, we will need to perfectly center the image nodes along the left side, top to bottom. Right click and choose a group option to group the image nodes together as one grouping. With the picture boxes grouped, right click, choose the align option, and click on the align vertical page center. The group will be perfectly spaced between the top and bottom of our layout. At this point, ungroup the picture boxes by right clicking on the group and then selecting the ungroup option. We now have individual image nodes to work with once again. Let's copy the three image nodes to the right side of our layout by right clicking, choose copy, and then paste to our layout. Drag the picture box to the right side of the two page spread and group them together by right clicking and then selecting group. To perfectly center the image nodes top to bottom, again right click, align, and then align vertical page center. Ungroup the nodes so they are once again individual image nodes to work with. As before, drag and drop images into the picture boxes. Select an image node or hold down the shift key and click on each image to select all. We can add borders, set the color of the border, adjust the size of the border. Again, we can add drop shadows, adjust the drop shadows as we have done earlier. Another element we can add to our layout is to add text. Click the text icon on the toolbar to add a text box to the page. As with the image nodes, drag the text box to where we want it. We can use the handles to change the text box shape and to add custom text to our layout. Once our text box is in the correct location, click outside of it to lock it in place. Double click on the text box to add our custom text. Input the text for our page design. Highlight the text and click the text tab in the upper right corner. From this tab, choose a font for the text, change the size of the text from the pull down menu, or by typing in the size we want.
select a justification for the text such as centering it left or right and top to bottom by clicking the left to right icon here and the top to bottom icon here. Click outside the text box to visualize the text on the page layout. In addition to our text being straight and level, text and image nodes can also be positioned at an angle. Click on the text box to view the handles in the four corners and four sides as we noted earlier with the picture boxes. In the upper left corner of the box is a special green handle. Click on the green handle and rotate the text box. In addition, we can further customize our text by adding an outline, change the color text, to name just a few additional features we can add to our text. Save this custom layout as a new page style we can use later in this album or another album for a different client. Again, go to the Page Styles tab, click the gear icon, and then Save Spread as Page Style. In this example, we will save this template as Test 2 and place it again in our Favorites category created earlier. Go to the Favorites category, click on Favorites, and we can see the templates we've designated as our favorite templates. Let's preview the layout of our album. Go to the toolbar and click the Preview button. A special preview screen will be displayed where we can view the first and second page layout. Click the Next Page icon to view Side 3 and Side 4. Continue clicking the Next button to view pages 5 and 6, 7 and 8, and the design we created for 9 and 10. Click the red X to close the preview window. Another feature in the software is the ability to rearrange the order of our pages. Go to the Page menu and select the Rearrange Pages option. To resequence our album pages from the original layout, click on a two page spread, then drag and drop it into the new position in the order of our pages. To return to our original layout, under the Pages is the original page sequence. When finished, click OK to save the new page sequence. Again, periodically save the project by clicking the floppy disk icon on the toolbar or by choosing File, Save from the File menu. As we finish the project, proofs of the album design can be created. Click the Create Proofs option from the File menu. This window will be displayed where we can choose a type of file to be output, such as JPEG files, TIFF files, or Adobe Acrobat PDF files. The multi-page PDF option will create a PDF file of all the images in our album layout. Choose a multi-page PDF option. We can select all pages included in our PDF and choose where the PDF is to be created by clicking the Select button in the destination area. Click OK and a PDF will be created of our album design that can be shared or emailed to our client. As we finish our album, here are a couple of last items to highlight. On the toolbar is the undo feature. If we do something and then need to immediately undo what we just did, click on this icon. There is also a standard keyboard shortcut of Control or Command Z that will do the same thing. We can also redo something we have just undone or use a keyboard shortcut Control or Command and Shift Z. There are options to zoom in and zoom out on our layout by clicking these icons. We can move to the pages of our design by clicking on the forwards or backwards buttons here. And lastly, we have the option here to change the product we are designing. For example, this album has been designed as a 12 by 12 leather covered album. We can easily change this to a 10 by 10 leather covered album by clicking the change product icon. This window is displayed where we can easily choose a 10 by 10 leather cover option. Click the change button and the album is now set up to create a 10 by 10 leather covered album.